to build on the OMOP theme, um, we have been doing a lot of work to get OMOP data running inside I2B2. And I'll go into how we did that. Uh, I put a few people's names on this slide. I'm Jeff, uh, remember me from earlier. Michelle is the, um, the queen of ontologies and has created and maintains the ACT ontology and is creating the OMOP ontology. And, and Sean's the guy who started it all. Um, and there are about a lot of other people and I have an acknowledgement slide at the end. <clears throat> so uh, I2B2, you might not think of this this way, but I2B2 really can support different data models. Because what is I2B2? I2B2 is three things. It's a client or a set of clients, the web client being the most popular one. And it's a server um, which runs on a wildfly on some, some machine somewhere that defines an XML interface uh, that can accept REST calls to query data conceptually that's in I2B2. And then it translates these XML calls into SQL queries and talks to a database where we have a star schema data structure and all kinds of complexity there. So what if you changed that piece out where instead of generating SQL queries on a star schema, it generates SQL queries in the OMOP schema or in the Cornet schema. So there was a pioneering work that Lori Phillips led uh, about five years ago that demonstrated that this could work. And um, we have pilots on both of those, and we'll be learning more about doing that on Pocornet, I think, later today as well. So this is the two data models at a very high level. It's slightly disingenuous because the left has all the clinical data tables and all of the vocabulary tables, and on the right, I'm only showing the clinical data tables. But um, you can see that OMOP has a lot more tables than I2B2. I2B2 puts almost everything into a big fact table and then it stores some connected data about the provider and the patient and the visit in separate tables that connect to that fact table. Um, OMOP uh, has tables for all of the different types of domains that you might want to query for drug exposure, for condition occurrences, for measurements, which are uh, lab, lab values and other things. Um, so you might look at this and say, well, they're completely different designs. There's no way that you could get a program that's designed to talk to a star schema to talk to that very different schema. But the insight is that actually they're very similar. The only difference is that in OMOP, you have a lot of fact tables. You have a fact table for conditions and a fact table for measurements and a fact table for drug exposures. Um, and otherwise, it's really, it's kind of the same thing. So what we do is we take the ACT ontology, and Michelle has taken the ACT ontology and put a lot of OMOP codes behind it. So when you drag over diabetes, it actually will query the um, OMOP standard and non-standard codes. Uh, and then we create these views that make the columns in the OMOP tables look like fact tables. So it just, I have this on the next slide, it just rearranges the ordering of the columns and does some slight manipulation here and there. Uh, yeah, so in this slide, you can see like uh, the, the observation fact tables on the left, the condition tables on the right. Uh, so person ID just gets mapped to patient num and visit occurrence ID gets mapped to encounter num and then down a little further condition concept ID just gets mapped to concept ID. So you have all of these specialized fact tables and when, when this was demonstrated five years ago, they wrote an extension to I2B2 so that you can modify the ontology to query whatever fact table you want. And that allows you to do this. Uh, now, OMOP uh, does, as Christian was saying, have a standard set of terminologies that it uses and it defines all those in the concept table. And it's, it's different than the ones that the ACT uses. It, just apples and oranges, not, one is not better than the other. But, um, but uh, OMOP tends to, correct me if I'm wrong, I suppose, but it tends to choose vocabularies that are good for analytics at an abstract level. So a SNOMED code, um, which has some nice properties of being just a defined thing that means, that means diabetes, just one code. Um, 
ACT tends to choose terminologies that are very close to the source data. So you might have um, ICD-10 codes for diagnoses, and uh, those have all kinds of subtypes and subcodes and a lot more complexity, but uh, it doesn't require any data transformation. So in order to be able to hit the source terminologies, if you have them in your OMOP data, we created a parallel set of views for the source facts because OMOP has a concept ID and then a source concept ID in all of the uh, fact tables. Um, uh, and this is also reflected in the OMOP vocabulary. The condition fact view looks for uh, things in the SNOMED vocabulary. You can see these are, the, this is a, this is Odyssey's Athena tool, which is a really nice tool for browsing all of the, uh, all of the terminologies that Odyssey supports. Um, so you can see the vocabulary on the right is SNOMED and the, um, the validity, oh, not the validity, I'm sorry, the concept, it says the column concept is standard. So the concept can be standard or non-standard and the standard ones are what, um, what OMOP uh, <clears throat> harmonizes to, uh, but you can also put data in the non-standard concepts as well. And, and so then in, here you see ICD-10. ICD-10 is a non-standard concept and those are all there as well. So those are searched in the condition source fact view. And the way this plays out in the ontology is you have the ACT hierarchy. So these are the exact same hierarchies that are in all the other ACT sites. So this is a diagnosis hierarchy and it's in ICD-10. But when you get, but there is a mapping between ICD-10 and SNOMED. So when you get down to the, to the, um, the child node, type two diabetes mellitus has two gray leaf nodes in it. And one of those is the standard code, which is the SNOMED code. And one of those is the non-standard code, which is the ICD-10 code. And thus you can query both types of data in a single uh, I2B2 hierarchy that matches what everyone else is doing in an act. So you have um, compatibility across the network. And this is going to allow us to onboard sites into an act that use the OMOP data model. I believe there actually already is one, maybe two. Is that right, Michelle? Are there two? The old version, okay, so onboarding new ones. Um, we, we have this uh, 3 million patient synthetic data set that uh, uh, some consultants created for us. And it uses Cynthia, which is an open source synthetic data, data set generator, and uh, SynPuff, which is uh, synthetic data from CMS that, um, that Odyssey provides to, to users. And, and so we, we extended this to be 3 million patients. And um, we're happy to provide this to anyone actually, but we don't really have a way to distribute it because it's huge. So if you have ideas on that, I'd be happy to get it to you somehow. Um, Snowflake, yeah, maybe Snowflake is the way to do it. Um, yeah, so this is, this is an example. Uh, I, I thought about trying to show a live demo and then got scared, so I took some screenshots. Uh, so you, in, in the ENACT OMOP ontology, you go down to beta blockers and, um, and angina. And so we're querying for angina and, and a beta blocker. So patient, and then we add a date constraint that you can kind of see in the upper right. So this is all patients who were diagnosed after 1-1-2005 who were prescribed a beta blocker. And just like you would expect in an ENACT data, and I2B2 data gives you a result and bar charts. Um, you can do temporal queries with this too. So this is diabetes and female, and the first instance of um, diabetes occurs before the first instance of insulin. So the patient started getting insulin after being diagnosed. Um, I realize that might not quite be a clinically accurate query, but, uh, but that also works. Temporal queries work great. Um, it, it also works with all of the I2B2 plugins. So you can use the export XLS plugin to get tabular data out and your OMOP data gets 
put into this table. Um, the, the quirk is that you get data out in OMOP ID codes. And so there, there is a level of redirection that maybe we need to work into the, to the software to make this actually useful because no one knows, I don't think that, uh, that sex8532 is female. Um, uh, but it's accurate. <laughs> it's just confusing. Um, and the timeline plugin works as well. So you can, this allows you to view certain uh, facts about the set of patients that were queried on a timeline, and then you can click on the tick marks and get more information about it. Um, and, and that was quite a trick to get that working. It actually required uh, a lot of uh, very careful work with the views to get them to be exactly like fact tables. So we're going to release this next month. They have an I2B2 update coming in a little while. And um, so you'll be able to download this and put it on your I2B2 site. Um, as part of what we're calling the 1.8 preview release. We'll talk about that more later. But you, if you go to the, the software download page of the community website, you'll be able to find more information on that. Mm, uh, there are, of course, many, many contributors to I2B2, um, including uh, all of those people and all of the core developers. And um, there are probably more people I should thank, but. I did my best. Okay, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, are we taking questions now or at the end? Okay, all right, cool. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.